we will discuss uh, the part 3 for lease accounting and that's the point of view of the lessee because in part 2 and part 1 na-discuss na natin doon yung point of view ni lessor okay so see to it no that all leases according to paragraph number 22 shall be accounted by the lessee as what as finance lease ulitin ko no under paragraph number 22 of IFRS number 16 all leases lahat ng lease na right uh, pinasok ni Lessie shall be accounted as I finance lease because kung matatandaan mo uh, last time no or sa part 1 and sa part 2 sabi natin meron dalawang klase ng lease ano yung dalawang klase ng lease meron tayong finance lease then meron tayong operating lease well pagdating kay Les or see to it na meron tayong mga uh, rules na tinitingnan meron tayong mga senaryo na kailangan makita para gamitin yung finance lease Otherwise, kapag wala itong mga senaryo na to, automatically nagiging operating list sa point of view ni Lesor yun. Pero dito sa point of view ni Lesi, sabi ni paragraph 22, lahat daw ng list accounted as a finance list except in the following two exceptional cases. Okay? So sir, ano yung dalawang exceptional cases na yun? Well, number one is kapag uh, short term lang po yung list. Once again, no, number one, kapag meron lang tayong short term list okay and then number 2 is kapag low value asset lang yung involved doon sa list low value asset okay so sir anong ibig sabihin ng dalawang yan well kapag sinabi natin short term list this is a list for a period of 12 months or less so kapag yung list no ang laman lang niya is 12 months or less asahan mo na short term list lang po yun Anag. And then this is a low value list no if according to the interpretation set by the uh, if freak no see to it that low value list is uh, or low value asset is an asset that has a fair value of uh, equal or less than what equal or less than 5000 US dollars okay so once again no lahat po ng list under less it shall be accounted as a finance list except etong dalawang case na to short term list and low value list pero hindi po automatically na operating no si tuit na sabi ni paragraph 22 the list is what the lessee is what the lessee is permitted ibig sabihin not required to use operating list accounting so kapag present isa sa dalawang yan pwede pong gumamit si lessee ng operating list accounting pero hindi required permitted lang magkaiba ang permitted sa required Maluwanag ba yun, guys? So, ngayon, ganito. Punta tayo sa low value asset because ito yung mahalaga eh, yung short term list. Well, madali lang tingnan yan. Itong low value asset, maraming nagkakamali dito. Okay? So, see to it, no? That according to IFRS 16, right? Uh, wala talagang quantitative threshold for low value asset. It is actually a matter of professional judgment. Pero once again, no? Kapag naghanap ka ng interpretation, ang makikita mo doon is... 5,000 US dollars or less. Okay? So, ngayon ang tanong, kailan natin i-assess yung value ng underlying asset? Well, see to it, no, that lessee shall assess the value of an underlying asset based on the value of the asset when it is new. So, kapag bago po siya, no, regardless of the age of the asset being leased. Ibig sabihin, kahit na 10 years old na yung asset na yan, hindi natin titignan yung fair value niya today. Ang titignan natin is yung what? is yung fair value niya kapag bago siya, kapag bibilin mo siyang bago today. Maliwanag ba? And dun sa fair value nung asset na yon based sa bagong asset, si Tweet, no? Na yun yung pagbabasihan po natin ng low value asset. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo dun? Okay? So once again, underlying asset is the subject of a lease for which the right to use that asset has been provided by the lesser to the lessee. Okay ba tayo dun? Okay? So ngayon, discuss po natin yung operating lease accounting muna before tayo pumunta no, sa finance lease accounting. Okay? So under operating lease accounting, si Tuit, no, yun hindi po to required. The lessee may or may not apply operating lease accounting. Pero pwede, rin, pwede lang siyang i-apply or it may only be applied if the lease is short term or if the underlying asset is low value. Okay? So if the lessee elects no, or chose uh, the, uh, to apply the operating lease accounting under the two exemptions given on the last slide, the lessee shall recognize the lease payments. No, Once again, the lessee 
shall recognize the least payments as an expense once again no as an expense in either no in either the straight line basis or over the list term na over the list term or another systematic basis system matic basis and that's in accordance with what that is in accordance with paragraph number 6 of IFR 16 okay so yung straight line basis na yan na discuss natin yan sa part 1 ng ating uh, discussion about leases no so please punta ka na lang doon well ang ibig lang naman sabihin niya no if iba-iba po or hindi pantay-pantay or pare-pareho yung payment every year see to it that you ha you just have to get the sum and then divide it over the useful or the list term because kapag sinabi nating straight line basis no the expense must be the same every year okay ba tayo dan okay then the less you shall apply only yung another systematic basis na dinutukoy ko kanina if this is more representative of the pattern of the less benefit otherwise syempre straight line basis lang tayo if the problem is silent straight line basis okay so under the operating List model, the periodic rental is simply recognized as rent expense on the part of the lessee. So, ganun lang po yung operating lease accounting. Okay? Now, punta tayo sa finance list accounting. No? So, pagdating sa finance list accounting, sabi nga natin substance over form. Even though the form of the transaction is that this is a rent transaction, since yung substance po niya is a sale transaction, iisipin natin na kapag narinig mong finance list, a sale transaction to. Okay? So, if finance list to, see to it, no, that the list transfers substantially or the, all the risk and rewards incidental to ownership of the underlying asset. Okay? Then, at the commencement date, ibig sabihin, at the inception date, the lessee shall recognize what? The lessee shall recognize, number one, right of used asset or yung tatawagin nating ruuwa. Okay? And then, yung pangalawa is yung tinatawag natin na what? Yung pangalawa is yung tinatawag naman natin na lease liability. Okay? So, dalawang bagay ang required i-recognize ni Lessie at the inception date or at the commencement date. Okay tayo doon? That is in accordance actually of IFRS number 16, paragraph number 22. Okay ba tayo doon? So, isa-isahin natin, no? Start tayo sa right of use asset. So, kapag sinabi nating right of use asset, this is actually the asset no that represents the right of a lessee to use an underlying asset over the lease term in a finance lease, of course. So, at commencement date, uh, according to paragraph 23 of IFR 16, right, at commencement date, uh, the lessee shall provide or shall measure the right of use asset at what? At cost. So, ibig sabihin, measured lang po yung right of use asset Initially, at cost, once again, this is the initial measurement. Initial pa lang yan, okay? Mamaya natin i-discuss yung subsequent measurement. So, the next question is, ano kaya ang laman ng cost? Tama ba? What's the composition of cost? Yun yung tanong, eh. Okay? So, actually, cost, meron yung lam limang laman, no? So, sir, ano po yung limang laman ng cost? Una, is yung tinatawag natin na uh, initial measurement. Again, first will be the initial measurement of list liability. So, sir, anong ibig po sabihin yan? Kapag mali ako sa initial measurement ng list liability, automatically mali na rin po yung ruuwa ko? Yes, tama yon. That's why dapat tama ang measurement mo ng list liability. Otherwise, mamamali din si ruuwa. Okay? Next, punta tayo sa number number two is yung tinatawag po natin na initial direct cost paid by whom? By the lessee. Okay? So, kapag si Lessie, nagbayad po ng initial direct cost, no? So, sir, ano, po, ano po ba yung mga initial direct cost na to? Well, initial direct cost, these are actually the incremental cost of obtaining a lease, but not including leasehold improvements, no? Sir, ano po ba itong mga leasehold improvements na to? Well, kapag sinabi po nating leasehold improvements, these are separately accounted for as PPE, no? And depreciated over the lease term or the life of the improvement, whichever is shorter. So, kapag gumastos ka ng leasehold improvement, hiwalay po yun sa cost ng ruuwa natin. Huwag mo siyang isasama, okay? Ang isasama mo lang is yung mga initial direct cost paid by the lessee. Sir, ano pa yung hindi kasama sa initial direct cost? Hindi rin po kasama dyan yung tinatawag natin na executory cost. So, lalagay ko dito, not part, no, of cost. 
para lang meron kang uh, lecture note, no? So, ano yung mga not part of cost? Number one, sabi ko kanina, is yung least hold improvement because irerecognize po ito as another asset and that is part of the property plan and equipment. Pangalawa, is yung tinatawag natin na executory cost. Sir, ano itong mga executory cost na to? Executory cost, these are actually ownership expenses, no? Such as maintenance, ano pa? Taxes, insurance, depreciation of the underlying asset, ano pa? Etc., etc. Hindi kasama yan sa cost ng ROA because such costs are expensed immediately when incurred. Nagkakaintindihan ba? Next, punta tayo sa pangatlo. Sir, ano po yung pangatlo? Well, yung pangatlo, ito yung tinatawag natin na suhol. Sir, suhol talaga. Hindi naman suhol. Sige, palitan natin. Yung tinatawag natin na padulas, no? Ibig sabihin yan, minsan, maraming gusto magrenta sa property na yan. And apparently, para piliin ka, no, ni lessor, eh, syempre, kailangan may padulas. Ibig sabihin ngayon, there might be an additional payment before the start of the lease. So, if there are lease payments no made to the lessor at or before commencement date, tinatawag po natin yung mga yon na lease bonus. And lease bonus are actually part no of the cost of right of use asset. So, lahat ng additional payment no before the start or yung mga padulas, well, isasama po natin yan sa cost ng ROA. Okay? Pero, meron tayong binabawas. So, ano yung binabawas natin? Ibabawas po natin dito yung tinatawag natin na lease incentives. Sir, bakit naman binawas siya mga yan? Because lease incentives, these are the payments by the lessor to the lessee. Pabalik sa atin. These are reimbursements by the lessor to the lessee associated no, with, a, with the lease or actually with the, ibig sabihin lang dito, ina-assume ni lessor lahat ng ginasos mo. Ibig sabihin, ito yung reimbursement nung alin? Reimbursement nung initial direct cost na, bin, na binayad mo kanina. So, kapag nagkaroon ng reimbursement, no, binalik ni lessor part ng mga binayad mo, si it na ibabawas mo po yun sa cost ng ROA. Okay? Then, one last thing nakasama sa initial cost of ROA is yung tinatawag natin na what? Well, number four is yung tinatawag po natin na estimated cost of what? Estimated cost of dismantling the asset. Ano pa? Restoration cost and ano pa? Removing, removing cost. Okay? So, sir, ano yung mga yan? Well, kapag sinabi natin cost of dismantling, dismantle, dismantle is the other term to destroy. That's why kapag meron kang gustong patayin, no? Or bugbugin, huwag mong sabihin, I will destroy you, no? Or I will re-kill you. Sabihin mo na lang, I will dismantle you. Joke lang, kidding aside, kapag sinabi natin dismantle, minsan kailangan natin sirain ng particular asset before we can remove it especially aircon no na nakadikit sa wall natin. So kapag kinuha mo yung aircon or ide-recognize mo yung aircon, si tweet na hindi mo naman yan maihila eh. Tama ba? So ang gagawin mo is i-dismantle or i-disassemble mo muna yan bago ka mag-incur ng removing cost. Okay? Then afterwards, kailangan mong i-restore yung site kung nasaan siya because apparently butas yan kapag hindi mo ni-restore. Tama ba? So the last part of the cost of Right of use asset will be the estimated cost of dismantling the asset, cost of removing the same, and restoring, of course, the asset to its original original condition and location. Okay? So, this is the composition of cost. We're good. Now, punta tayo sa subsequent measurement. So, burayin ko muna itong lease liability no, sa next page na natin to ilagay kasi meron pa akong gustong sabihin dito sa right of use asset. So, after nating malaman yung cost ng right of use asset number 3 muna sa mga cost or sa mga na incur ni lessi na hindi part ng cost ano yung number 3 nakalimutan ko lang sabihin kanina pero number 3 is yung tinatawag po natin na refundable security deposits okay so sir ano po ba yung mga yan well refundable security deposit no is not a lease bonus because these are from the term itself refundable big sabihin marireceive mo yan at the end of the lease term And so, therefore, kailangan i-treat mo yan as a receivable. May iba tayo dun. Ngayon, ganito. Punta tayo sa subsequent measurement. No? What, what is the subsequent measurement of right of use asset? Ibig sabihin, magkano ba yung carrying amount na ipipresent natin sa statement of financial position? Okay? So, according no, 
2, IFRS number 16, paragraph 29, lessee shall apply the right of use asset using what? Using the cost model. Ibig sabihin, carrying amount now will be equal to the cost minus what? Minus accumulated depreciation. Again, minus the accumulated depreciation. Then minus the accumulated impairment losses. Sir, familiar? Po ata yan. Yes, familiar talaga yan. That's the same carrying amount computation under cost model din sa investment property and sa aan pa, saan pa? Sa intangible asset at saka sa property, plant, and equipment. Okay? So, once again, no? Cost minus accum debt minus impairment loss. I believe sanay naman na tayong mag-depreciate, sanay na rin naman tayong mag-compute ng impairment losses. Therefore, madaling-madali na lang to. Basta tama lang yung cost natin. Okay ba tayo doon? Okay? Then, carrying amount, always remember is adjusted for any remeasurement of what? For any remeasurement of the lease liability because part of the cost is actually the lease liability. So, just in case, no, na ni-remeasure mo yung lease liability, asahan mo na kailangan mo ring i-remeasure yung right of use asset natin. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo doon? So, ngayon, punta tayo sa other measurement models because meron tayong ibang mga bagay na pwedeng gamitin or model na pwedeng gamitin in subsequently measuring the right of use asset. No? What's the first one? The first one is yung tinatawag po natin na fair value model. But lessee shall only apply no, this fair value model if and only if, letter A or number 1, the lessee applies the fair value model in measuring investment property and the right of use asset is actually an investment property or the lease asset is actually an investment property. Okay? Then, syempre, alright, Kapag investment property yan, ipipresent mo rin itong right of use asset na to under investment property. Once again, no, pwede po natin gamitin yung fair value model as long as number one, the right of use asset meets the definition of investment property. Number two, the lessee applies the fair value model in measuring the investment property or the right of use asset. Then number two, lessee may also elect to apply the revaluation model if and only if the right of use asset relates to a class of PPE to which the lessee applies the revaluation model. Because according to IAS 16, if we will uh, go to, I to IAS number 16, see to it no, that if we applied or we chose the revaluation model, we should apply the same saan? over the whole class right, of property, plant, and equipment. Hindi pwedeng pa isa-isa. Dapat kapag pinili mo yung revaluation model, right? E tipo bang lahat or whole class of that asset ay naka-revaluation model? Meaning, kapag naka-revaluation model yung land mo, lahat ng land revaluation model. Hindi pwedeng tingi-tingi. Okay? So, kapag yung inupahan mong asset no, is actually part of that class of PPE na measure mo under revaluation model, yung list asset ngayon, measure mo din under revaluation model. That's actually in accordance with paragraph 34 and paragraph 35 of IFRS number 16. Pero, if the problem is silent as to the model or method we are using, according once again to paragraph number 29, eh, cost model lang po tayo. Huwag kang mag-overthink. Huwag kang mag-overanalyze. Maliwanag ba? Ngayon, punta tayo sa paragraph 47. Anong sinasabi ni paragraph 47 of IFR 16? Sabi niya, Lessie shall present the right of use asset as a separate line item in the statement of financial position. So, separate line item po, itong uh, rouwan na to. Okay? But alternatively, the lessee may include the right of use asset in the appropriate line item within which the corresponding underlying asset would be presented if owned. Meaning, kapag umupa ka or nag ka ng building, pwede mo rin daw siyang i-add sa total cost ng building, sa total carrying amount ng building. Pero, alternative lang yon. As a general rule, dapat separate line item po siya sa statement of financial position. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo doon? We good? Ngayon, ganito. Punta tayo sa depreciation no? of the right of use asset. Well, kapag silent ang problem po, gating sa depreciation, syempre, straight line method lang tayo. And under the straight line method, how do we compute for the annual depreciation? Well, annual depreciation no? is actually equal to cost minus residual value. Again, minus, no? the residual value, then divided by what? Divided by the useful life of that asset. 
nagkakaintindihan ba tayo? So, kung titingnan mo, parang madali lang, no? Pero actually, marami ka pang kailangan tandaan dito. Okay? Start tayo sa residual value. Sa residual value, see to it, no? Na, kailangan alam mo kung anong gagamitin mo residual value. Sir, bakit naman? Because meron po tayong tatlong klase ng residual value. Sir, ano yung tatlong yan? Una is yung residual value guaranteed. Pangalawa is the residual value unguaranteed. Then last is the residual value at the end of the life of the asset. Sir, ano pinagkaiba ng residual value at the end of the life? Well, kapag guaranteed at guaranteed, see to it na yun yung residual value at the end of lease term lang. Iba po yun sa residual value at the end of the life talaga. Okay? So, ngayon makinig. Kapag letter T or letter O is present, no? Sir, ano yung letter T or letter O? Well, letter T is the transfer of ownership, then letter O is the option to purchase. So, kapag present sa problem, yung transfer of ownership or option to purchase, automatically, ang gagamitin nating residual value here is the residual value at what? At the end of the life, again, at the end of the life of the asset. Sir, bakit naman ganun? Because if present yung T at yung O, asahan mo na, the asset will no longer be reverted back to the lessor. Hindi na ibabalik pa yung asset because kay lessi na yan mananatili. Alright? And if that's the case, pagdating naman sa useful life, see to it, no? kapag present yung letter T or letter O na yan, ang gagamitin natin since wala nang balikan, no? will be the useful life. Again, ang gagamitin po natin dito will be the useful life of the asset. Okay? So, sir, what if wala pong given sa problem na may transfer of ownership, wala rin pong option to purchase, no? So, kapag walang given sa problem na transfer of ownership and option to purchase, ang gagamitin po nating residual value will be the residual value guaranteed. Once again, no? Ang gagamitin natin will be the residual value guaranteed. Eh, sir, paano kapag ang guaranteed yung given? See to it na kapag less yung pinag-uusapan, ang guaranteed residual value is always ignored. Okay? So, sir, bakit naman sa lessor? Whether guaranteed or unguaranteed sinasama, bakit kay lessee kapag guaranteed lang? Siyempre, kapag kay lessor, ipabalik kasi sa kanya yung asset. So, mahalaga na malaman natin kung guaranteed ba or unguaranteed. Okay? Pero kay lessee, importante lang yan kapag guaranteed yung residual value. Kapag unguaranteed, ignore mo yon, Ignore mo lang yon automatically. Okay ba tayo dun? Now, anong gagamitin na useful life kapag wala yung letter T or letter O? Kapag hindi po present sa problem yung letter T or letter O, ang gagamitin natin na useful life here in computing the annual depreciation will be what? Will be the useful life or lease term. Again, this is the useful life or lease term whichever, again, whichever is shorter. So, kung anong mas maikli po sa dalawa? Well, normally, mas maikli yung lease term. That is why kapag Neither is present, meaning wala yung transfer of ownership, wala rin yung option to purchase, not normally, lease term na yung ginagamit. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo doon? Ngayon, punta tayo no, sa measurement nung lease liability natin. So, after nating malaman kung paano yung may measure initially and subsequently yung ROOA, punta tayo sa lease liability. Okay? So, initial measurement muna tayo ng lease liability. Well, according no, to... Paragraph 26 of IFRS number 16 at the commencement date, the lessee shall measure lease liability at what? At the present value of lease payments. Again, present value lang po ito ng lease payments. So sir, ibig pong sabihin yan, kailangan pa rin maggumamit po ng present value factor. Yes, kailangan pong gumamit. So sir, ano pong gagamitin na interest rate sa pag-compute ng present value factor? Once again, Interest rate will be based on the following in the order of priority. So, hindi mo pwedeng gamitin si number 2 unless number 1 is not present. Okay? Ano nga ulit yung number 1? Kapareho lang po ito ng sa lessor. Number 1 will be the implicit rate in the list. And then number 2 po is yung tinatawag naman natin na incremental borrowing rate. Again, number 1 will be the implicit uh, borrowing rate. Number one will be the implicit rate, then number two will be the incremental borrowing rate. Okay? So, yun yung ginagamit sa pag-compute ng present value factors. Ano ba? Ngayon, alamin natin kung ano ba yung ating ipipresent value. Ano ba yung laman ng list payments, no? Well, list payments, kagaya lang ng ROOA, lima po ang laman yan. Okay? Number one, ano yung number one natin? Number one, 
will be the fixed lease payment. Again, meron tayong tinatawag na fixed lease payments, no? So, number one will be the lease, uh, fixed lease payments. Okay? Ano pa? Number two, syempre, will be what? Number two is yung tinatawag naman natin na variable lease payments. Sir, anong pinagkaiba ng fixed lease payments sa variable lease payments? Well, kapag po sinabi natin fixed lease payments, eto yung lease payments annually na hindi na nagbabago. Every period, hindi na nagbabago. Pero kapag variable lease payments, payment made by the lessee for the right of to use the underlying asset during the lease term vary. Right? Because of changes in facts and circumstances occurring after the commencement date. Meaning, possible nagka-inflation. That's why tumaas ang renta na binabayaran mo. So, if that's the case, variable lease payment na yan. Okay? Next, punta tayo sa number 3. Ano yung pangatlong kailangan natin yung present value? Number 3 is yung tinatawag naman po natin na option price. Nag-exist lang to kapag what? Nag-exist lang po to kapag the lessee has the option to purchase the asset at the end of the lease term. And that right, right, must be reasonably or must be probable to be exercised by the lessee. Okay? Reasonably certain dapat, actually not, not just probable, no? reasonably certain that the lessee will exercise the option. Okay? Number four, punta tayo sa number four. Number four will be the residual value guaranteed. Alright, again, number four will be the residual value guaranteed. Okay? Ibig sabihin dito, ito yung ginaranteed ni Lessie na residual value, no? Yan yung value ng asset kapag binalik niya kay Lessie. Okay? Sir, paano naman kapag ang guaranteed? Kapag ang guaranteed po, not assured yun, ibig sabihin, ignore mo lang yun. Because dapat guaranteed yung residual value bago mo i-present value. Then, before ako pumunta dun sa number five, no? Say to it na number 3 and number 4, hindi po sila pwedeng magsabay. Okay? So, kapag may option price, hindi mo na po gagamitin pa yung residual value guaranteed. Alwanag ba? So, gagamitin mo lang yung residual value guaranteed if and only if wala pong option price na given or wala pong uh, transfer of ownership na given in the problem. So, kapag sinabi ng problem or may provision sa problem that at the end of the lease term, no, there is a transfer of ownership to the lessee or merong option to purchase, automatically, si number 4 po, hindi nakasama. Okay? So, si number 4, medyo crucial pa. Si number 4, medyo conditional pa siya. Okay? Hindi siya always. Okay? Then, number 5 will be what? Number 5 will be the termination penalties. Again, number 5 is yung tinatawag po natin na termination penalties. Right? If the lease term reflects the exercise of a termination option. Okay? So, ito po yung limang bagay na kailangan natin i-present value. And that's the initial measurement of what? That's the initial measurement of the least liability. Nagkakaintindihan ba tayo? Ngayon, pumunta po tayo sa subsequent measurement. No? What will be the subsequent measurement of least liability? Well, subsequent measurement of least liability will be actually the amortized cost. Ibig sabihin, gagamit pa rin po tayo dito ng effective interest method. So, kapag sinabi nating amortized cost, this is actually equal, no? To the carrying amount at the beginning, okay? Minus principal payment. Again, minus principal payment. So, sir, paano po makukuha yung principal payment na yan? That's actually the annual lease payment. Again, this is the annual lease payment minus the interest expense. So, unahin mong bayaran yung interest bago mo i-apply yung payment sa an bago mo i-apply yung payment sa principal. Alwanag ba yun, guys? Then apparently, interest expense is actually equal to the carrying amount at the beginning times the rate na ginamit natin sa pag-compute ng present value factor. So kung implicit rate ang ginamit mo sa pag-compute ng present value factor, implicit rate din ang gagamitin sa pag-compute ng interest. If incremental ang ginamit, incremental din ang gagamitin yan. Okay? Pero based sa past discussion ko, no, I'll, I give you a shortcut on how to compute the amortized cost or the carrying amount at the end. So, see to it that carrying amount at the end is actually equal to the carrying amount at the beginning times 1 point effective rate minus the payment. So, see to it na nag apply din po itong shortcut computation na to dito sa leases. Nagkakaintindihan po ba tayo doon? So, yun na lahat ng kailangan mong malaman actually about lease accounting or finance lease accounting pagdating kay Lessie. So, to apply all these concepts, let's now move on here 
sa problem number 1. So here, in problem number 1, on January 1, 2022, Pepper Company leased a machinery for 4 years. The useful life of the machinery is 5 years, and then the lease is at an annual rental or fixed payment of 100,000 payable at the end of each year. Ibig sabihin, ordinary annuity ang ating gagamitin. Okay? But if the first payment will be at the beginning of each year, well, annuity due ang ating gagamitin. Okay? So, the implicit rate of interest is 12%. Then, the lease provides for a transfer of ownership of the underlying asset to the lessee at the end of the lease term. Ibig sabihin, present yung letter T. If present yung letter T, once again, residual value na gagamitin will be the residual value at the end of useful life. E wala namang given. So, ibig sabihin, huwag mo nang problemahin. And then, useful life na gagamitin will be the original useful life, which is 5 years kasi nga may transfer of ownership, okay? So, requirement 1, what is the initial lease liability? Wala ba? So, dito, isa lang naman ang kailangan natin i-present value out of 5 na components ng lease payment. E, isa lang yung given, that's the fixed payment. So, yun lang, no? So, present value, no, of lease liability now is actually equal to the 100,000 annual lease payments times the present value factor of ordinary annuity. Paano nga yun? That's 1.12 divided by divided by click equal sign, then click M plus 4 times. Kasi 4 years lang ang bayaran. 4 years lang po ang lease term, ha? hindi 5. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, then MR, that will give us 3.0373. Okay? Then 100,000 times 3.0373 that's actually equal to 303,730. That's why requirement number 1, 303,730 will be the final answer. Okay? Requirement 2, what is the cost of the right of use asset? Well, out of 5 components of cost, isa lang din ang given. That's the initial measurement of lease liability. That's why ang ROUA natin will be equal to the lease liability of 303,730 as well. Kasi wala namang given na lease bonus. Wala rin given na lease incentive. Wala rin given na initial direct cost or dismantling cost. That is why yung initial measurement ng lease liab, yun na yun. Yun na yung ating ROUA. That's why requirement 2, ROUA, 303.730, final answer. Requirement 3, how much is the depreciation for the year 2020? So situate that depreciation expense is equal to the cost of 303.730, eh wala namang residual value. That's why divide mo na yan outright dun sa useful life na gagamitin natin, which is 5 years. Okay? So, 303,730 divided by 5, depreciation expense will be equal to 60,746 annually. Anag? Number 4, how much is the carrying amount of ROUA at the end of 2022? Well, carrying amount no, of ROUA will just be equal to the cost of 303,730 minus the accumulated depreciation, which is 6746. Sir, bakit naman pareho? Kasi, January 1, 2022 yung start. So, one day pa lang po, I mean, one year pa lang ang lumilipas. So, accumulated amortization will only be equal to one year amort ah, depreciation. Okay? That's equal to 303,731 once again, minus 6746, or this is equal to 242,984. So, this is our final answer for requirement number 3. Requirement uh, requirement number 4 na pala to because requirement number 3 is 6746. Then requirement 5, prepare an amortization schedule. Okay? So here on our amortization schedule, meron tayong date. Next column will be the payment or the annual fixed payment. Next column will be the interest expense. No? Then next column will be the principal payment. Then last column will be the carrying amount. Okay? So, on January 1, 2022, see to it that the carrying amount of lease liability is 303730 Then, we need to pay for 4 years. No? So, December 31, 2022. December 31, 2023. December 31, 2024. And then, December 31, 2025. Okay? Annual payment, once again, is 100,000. So, 100,000, 100,000. 100,000 and 100,000 pesos. So first, let's compute how much will be the interest expense. 303,730 times 10, uh, 12%. This is actually equal to 36,448. Okay? Deduct that from 100,000 
principal payment now will be equal to 63,552. Since this is a principal payment, carrying amount of lease liability now will decrease. So 303, 730 minus that principal payment, the carrying amount at the end of 2022 will now be equal to 240,178. Okay? Times 12% once more, this is equal to 28,821. Deduct that from 100,000, you'll get 71,179. Okay? Then deduct that ulit sa 240,178, ang lalabas is 168,999. Times 12%, interest expense for the year 2024 is equal to 20,280. Minus mo sa 100,000, ang lalabas is 79,000. 720 Then deduct mo yan sa so 168,999 Ang lalabas is 89,279 Okay ba tayo doon? Hopefully you're still good no? Next, dapat magzi-zero na ang ating caring amount So ang gagawin natin dito is Force balance natin yung principal payment Dapat yung principal payment natin will be equal to how much? This must be equal to 89,279 so, magkano dapat ang interest expense? This is 100,000 minus 89,279. Okay? So, 100,000 minus 89,279. Interest expense now, on December 31, 2025, will be equal to 10,721. Sir, bakit naman ganun ang naging computation? Well, kapag kasi minultiply mo, no, yung 89,279 sa 12%, hindi 10,721 ang lalabas. Magkano lalabas? 89,279 times 12%, that's 10,713. There's a difference no, of 8 pesos that is due to the rounding off of present value factors. That is why, instead of what? instead of uh, multiplying the carrying amount at the beginning by 12%, what we did is actually, with, uh, is actually to deduct or we deduct the principal payment from the total payment to compute the interest expense. Are we good? So what will be the journal entry here? The journal entry on January 1, 2022, para lang kompleto yung discussion natin, no? is to debit what? Debit right of used asset equal to the initial carrying amount of 303,730. Then credit lease liability equal to 303,730. Okay? Next, every December 31, what will be the journal entry? Every December 31, the journal entry is to debit depreciation expense Credit accumulated depreciation equal to 60,746. Also, every December 31, the journal entry is to debit interest expense equal to the interest expense per year, debit lease liability equal to the principal payment, then credit cash for the total payment of 100,000. Okay? Then lastly, just to prove, no, Na umaandar po yung shortcut na sinabi ko kanina. On your calculators, input 303,730 times 1.12, then deduct 100,000. Isn't it lumalabas si 240,178? Times mulit yan ng 1.12 minus 100,000. Ang lalabas is 168,999. Times 1.12 minus 100,000. Ang lalabas yan is 89,279. Then wag mo na yung gagawin sa dulo. Right? Kasi nga, hindi na yan mag-equal to zero. Try mo man, times 1.12 minus 100,000, ang lalabas is may difference na 8 pesos. That is due to the rounding off of present value factor. Okay? Now, punta tayo dito sa illustrative problem number 2. So, here, Pepper Company leased an equipment on January 1, 2022 with the following information. Fixed annual payment at the end pa din no, of each year is 1 million pesos. Lease term is 4 years, useful life of the equipment is 5 years. Implicit interest rate is 10% and then the present value factors are given already. Pepper Company has guaranteed 200,000 residual value on December 31, 2025. So requirement number 1, what is the initial lease liability? Well, dito dalawa na no, yung present value natin. So we have present value of rentals and then we have present value of what? We have present value of residual value. So, present value of rentals, then present value of residual value. Okay? So, rentals natin is equal to 1 million annually. Multiply natin yan, syempre, sa 3.16987. 
Then residual value is equal to 200,000 and then times 0 0.6803. Okay? So 1 million. 1 million times 3.16987 is equal to 3,169,870. Then 200,000 times 0 0.683 is actually equal to 136,600. Adding these two will give us the initial measurement of least liability, which is equal to how much? This is actually equal to uh, 316,970 plus 136,600, or this is equal to 3306,470. Okay? This is the final answer for requirement number one. Requirement number two, what is the cost of the right of used asset? So, see to it here, no, no, wala pa rin initial direct cost, wala pa rin lease bonus, lease incentive, and even dismantling cost na given. That's why initial measurement of ROOA will also be equal no, to 3306470, and that's our final answer for requirement number 2. Requirement number 3, how much is the depreciation expense for the year 2022? Well, depreciation expense is actually equal no, to the cost of 3306 470 minus what? Well, didak mo lang dyan yung residual value guaranteed natin which is 200,000 kasi wala naman sinabi ang problem na may transfer of ownership or may option. Okay? Then divide natin yan saan? I-divide po natin yan sa 4 years lang whichever is lower tayo because wala ngang transfer of ownership or option. Okay? So magkano yung depreciation expense? This is 3306,470 minus 200,000 divided by 4 years or this is equal to 776,618. Malawanag ba Hopefully, we're still good, no? So, this is the final answer for the third requirement. Next, requirement number four. How much is the carrying amount of the right of use asset at the end of 2022? So, here, to compute, no? We'll start with the cost of 3306,470. Then, let's just deduct here the accumulated depreciation, which is just for one year. No, one year lang lumipa. So, 776, 618 na yun. Okay? So, how much now will be the carrying amount? The carrying amount will be equal to 3306, 470 minus 776, 618. Or, this is actually equal to 200, uh, 2,529,852. So, this is our final answer for requirement number what? Requirement number A4. Okay ba tayo dun? Hopefully, we're still good, no? Next requirement, requirement number 5 is to prepare an amortization table pa din. Okay? So, our starting point will be January 1, 2022. Once again, no, next column will be the interest expense. Next column will be the principal repayment. Next will be what? Look lang, second column pala will be the total payment muna. Sorry na. So, total payment, next will be the interest expense. Next will be the principal repayment. Then, last will be the carrying amount. Okay? So, carrying amount on December, ah, on January 1, 2022 is 3306,470. So, lalagay ko dito 3306,470. Four years ang bayaran. So, December 31, 2022. December 31, 2023. December 31, 2024. The last but not the least will be December 31, 2025. Okay? So, annual payment is 1 million pesos, no? So, every year, there's a payment of 1 million pesos. Okay? So, ngayon, computein natin magkano yung ating interest expense for the year 2022. 10% lang po ang implicit, ah. So, 3306,470 times 10%, that's equal to 330,000. 647. Deduct that, no? From 1 million, we'll get what? We'll get 669,353. Then, deduct mo yun sa 3306,470, kagaya lang kanina, ang makukumpute mong carrying amount will be 2637,117. Okay? Multiply mo yan sa uh, 10% ulit, because 10% is the implicit, ang makukuha mo dito will be 263,712. Deduct that from 1 million, principal repayment will be 736,288. Then deduct that 736,288 sa 2637,117. Makukompute natin yung carrying amount at the end of 2023, 
which is equal to 1,900,829. Times 10% ulit, magkano lumalabas? 190,083. Minus 1,000,000, the principal repayment will be 809,917. Then deduct mo ulit yun, so 1,900,829, or this will be equal to 1 million what? 1,090,912. Okay? Once again, no, ang matira dapat po dito will be the residual value of 200,000. So, ilalagay ko dito 200,000. Okay? So, kung 200,000 yan, magkana dapat yung principal repayment? That's 1,090,912 minus 200,000 or yung principal repayment dapat nagkakahalaga ng 890,912. Okay? So, magkano ngayon ang interest expense natin? This is equal to 1 million pesos total payment minus 890,912 or magkano yan? This is equal to 109,088. Maliwanag ba yun? So, sir, bakit hindi mo nalang minultiply by 10% yung 1 million 90,912? Because may difference dun na lalabas na magkano yung difference. The difference there will be equal to 109091 minus 109088 or there's a difference of 3 pesos that is due to the rounding off of present value factors. May kakaintindihan po ba tayo doon? Okay? So, ang ginawa natin, finors balance natin yung principal by deducting no, from this yung 200,000 dapat ending. Then, after that, dinidak natin yung principal payment sa total payment para makompute yung interest expense. Okay, so that's the amortization table. Number six, how much is the loss on finance list if the fair value of the equipment on December 31, 2025 is only 150,000? Once again dito, nangako tayo ng magkano? Nangako po tayo ng 200. So kung nangako po tayo ng 200,000, asahan mo na 200,000 dapat ang ating ibabalik. So ang ibig pong sabihin niyan, if nangako ka ng 200, 150 na lang yung fair value ng asset na binabalik mo, asahan mo na kailangan mong bayaran yung difference as the lessee kasi 200 pinangako natin eh. That's why in number 6, if tatanungin tayo how much is the loss on finance list if the fair value of the equipment on December 31, 2025 is only 150,000, our final answer here in number 6 no will be equal to 50,000 pesos. Sir, paano mo na compute yun? Well, that's e that is equal to the residual value guaranteed na 200 minus the fair value at the end of 150,000. Okay? So, kailangan mong bayaran yan and then i-recognize po natin yan as a loss. Okay? That's why here the journal entry is to debit loss then credit cash. The number 7. How much is the gain on finance list if the fair value of the equipment on December 31, 2025 is only equal to 250,000 pesos? Okay? So, if the fair value is equal to 250,000 pesos, wala tayong problema. Sir, bakit naman? 200 yung pinangako mo eh. Pag sinabi natin, residual value guarantee, that's the minimum amount ng asset na ibabalik mo. So, kapag kumulang dun yung fair value, kailangan mo magbayad. Pero kapag sumobra, walang problema. Sir, hindi ba tayo maniningil? Hindi. Hindi ka babayaran ni lessor. That's why here in number 7, kung tatanungin tayo magkano yung gain, our final answer will be equal to 0. So number 6, 50,000 loss. Then number 7, 0 ang ating sagot. So that is illustrative problem number 2. Okay? So now, punta tayo dito sa illustrative problem number 4. Okay? So here, in illustrative problem number 4, Pepper Company leased an equipment on January 1, 2022 with the following information, no? So, we have fixed annual payment in advance at the beginning. Again, at the beginning tayo this time, ibig sabihin, annuity due ang ating gagamitin, okay? Of each list year, and that's equal to 1 million. Initial direct cost paid on January 1, 2022 is equal to 250,000. Lease incentive received is 150,000. And residual value guarantee is 300,000. Lease term is 5 years, useful life of equipment is 6 years, then implicit interest rate no, will be 8%. Present value factors are also given, so hindi na tayo pinapahirapan pa right, dito sa illustrative problem number 4. Ba? So here, what are the requirements? Requirement number 1, what is the initial lease 
liability. Well, dito dalawa, no? that's the present value of rentals, then the present value of the residual value. So, present value of rentals will be equal to the 1 million pesos annual payment times the present value factor of annuity due of 1, which is equal to 4.3121. Then, residual value is equal to, magkano residual value? That's 300,000, okay? Times the present value of 1, which is 0 0.6806, okay? So, magkano yan, guys? 1 million times 4.3121. This is equal to 4,312,100. Then, 300,000 times 0 0.6806. That's actually equal no, to 204,180. And adding these two will give us the initial measurement of least liability, which is equal to magkano po yan? This is equal to 4312100 plus 204,180 or this is equal to 4516,280. Okay? So requirement number one, 4516,280 is our final answer. Requirement 2, what is the cost of right of use asset? This time, hindi na po 4516, ha? Because meron na tayong ibang bagay na given. So, once again, no? Una sa composition ng cost will be the initial measurement of least liable, which is equal to 4516,280. Okay? I-add natin doon, syempre, yung initial direct cost, which is equal to 250,000. Then, tanggalin mo yung least incentive because least incentive is actually deducted, no? As discussed a while ago. So, minus 150,000 pesos tayo. So, magkano yung cost of ruuwan natin? Cost of ruuwan now will be equal to 4516280 plus 250,000 then minus 150,000 or this is equal to 4,616,280 and this is the final answer for the second requirement. Okay? Next requirement, requirement number 3. How much is the depreciation expense no for the year 2022 dito meron po bang sinabing transfer of ownership or option to purchase wala ibig sabihin ang gagamitin natin will be the lower eh 5 years ang mas mababa so yun yung gagamitin okay so depreciation expense will now be equal to the cost of 4616280 minus the residual value guarantee which is equal to 300,000 divided by 5 years lang po okay so, magkano yan, guys? This is equal to 4616, once again, 4616, 280 minus 300,000 divided by 5, or this is equal to 863,256. Kakaintindi ba? So, this is our final answer for the third requirement. The last requirement, no, will be the interest expense for the year 2022. Okay? So, on January 1, 2022, asahan mo na meron tayong 4516, 280, Kaso, may unang payment, payment on January 1 din kasi in advance or at the beginning ng bayaran. So, minus mo muna yung 1 million pesos bago mo yun i-multiply by 8%. So, magkano talaga yung carrying amount as of 2022, January 1? That's only equal to 3516,280. Tsaka mo ngayon yun i-multiply no? by 8% para ma-compute yung interest expense. Not unlike kanina na yung carrying amount at the beginning, minultiply natin outright sa interest rate, no? This time, hindi ganun kasi advance yung bayaran. Okay? So, 3516,280 minus, ah, uh, times rather, times 8%. This is actually equal to 281,302. And this is our final answer for requirement number 4. So, that is illustrative problem number 4. Okay? Now, punta tayo dito sa illustrative problem number 5. So, Pepper Company Leasing Machine on January 1, 2022 with the following pertinent information. Fixed annual payment at the end of each year is 1 million. Lease term is 10 years. Useful life is 12 years. Incremental borrowing rate is 14. Implicit rate is 12. Siyempre, implicit tayo. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, tanggalin mo yung naka 14%. So, hindi po kasama itong 5.216 kasi pang 14% yan, hindi rin kasama itong 0.270. So, in circle mo yung kasama lang, no? That's 5.65 and, ano to, 0.322. Okay? So, here, Pepper Company has the option, once again, has the option to purchase the machine upon the lease expiration on January 1, 2022 by paying 500,000. 
The lessee is reasonably certain to exercise the purchase option at the commencement date of the lease. Then ano pang meron? The estimated residual value of the machine at the end of the 12-year useful life is 600,000. Once again, iba po yan dun sa residual value guarantee na tinatawag because residual value guarantee is only the residual value at the end of the lease term. Okay? Yan is at the end of the useful life talaga. So, requirement number one, initial lease liability. Okay? So, dito, dalawa ulit, present value of rentals. Then, pangalawa is yung present value of option. Kakaintindihan ba? So, present value of rentals will be equal to 1 million times 5.65. Then, present value of option is equal to 600, a ah, joke lang, is equal to 500,000 times the present value of 1. Kasi minsan mo lang naman yun babayaran eh. Which is 0 0.322. Nagkakaintindihan po ba tayo dun? Hopefully, nagkakaintindihan ba tayo, no? Ano nag ba? Ayan, ganito. 1 million times 5.65. This is actually equal to 5,650,000. Then, 500,000 times 0.322 is actually equal to 161,000. Adding these two will give us the initial measurement of least liability, which is equal to magkano? 5,650 plus 161,000 or this is equal to 5,811,000. So, requirement number 1, 5811, is our final answer. Okay? Requirement 2, what is the cost of right of use asset? Wala namang given dito, no? Na what? Walang given dito na initial direct cost, lease bonus, lease incentive, and dismantling cost. So, kung ano yung initial measurement ng LL, yun na rin yung initial measurement ng RUUA. That's why requirement number 2, 5811 as well, will be our final answer. So that is illustrative problem number 5. Okay? Then before we move on no, to illustrative problem number 6, what if nagkaroon ng actual sale or sabihin na natin actual purchase rather, no? kasi lessy na pala tayo this time, actual purchase of leased asset. Ibig sabihin, at the middle of the year no, or at the middle of the lease term or during the lease term, Binli mo bigla yung asset. So, what will be the cost, no? Again, ang problema dito is the cost of the acquired asset. So, paano ang magiging cost ng acquired asset natin? This will be equal to the carrying amount of ROA. Again, this is equal, no? To the carrying amount of ROA plus cash payment if meron, no? Siyempre, obviously, meron yan. Then, minus mo yung what? Minus natin yung carrying amount of least liability. So, ganun lang yun kadali. Okay? So, try ngayon natin yun dito sa illustrative problem number 6. So, Pepper Company purchased an equipment that it had been leasing under a finance lease for 4 million pesos. Okay? So, 4 million will be the cash payment no, or the purchase price. Ano ba? The balances of certain accounts on the date of actual purchase are as follows. Right of use asset, 5 million. Accumed debt, 1.5. So, carrying amount of ROUA is actually equal to 3.5 million pesos. Then, lease liab is 3.8. Anong tanong? What is the cost of the equipment purchased? So, dito, carrying amount of ROUA is once again equal to 3.5 million plus the cash payment, no? Which is equal to 4 million pesos. Then, deduct mo lang dyan yung carrying amount of lease liability which is equal to 3.8 million pesos. So, the cost of acquired asset now will be equal to how much? That's equal to 3.5 plus 4 million minus 3.8 or this will be equal to 3.7 million. That's why illustrative problem number 6, 3.7 million will be our final answer. So, this will be the end no, of this part of lease accounting. So, hopefully, marami ka natutunan about lease accounting on the point of view of the lessee. Later, no, sa part 4 ng ating discussion, i-discuss naman natin yung sale and lease back transaction. So, please stay tuned no, here on our channel. Thank you guys for supporting this channel. No. See you on our next video sa sa mga susunod pang videos na gagawin natin. Always keep safe and God bless guys. Bye-bye!